So YouTube told me that there are 131 people here and I'm losing my crap. I'm so excited that y'all are here. Wait, what is this errant curl just girl get back in place okay anyways hi everybody it is five o'clock on the dot i'm here on time you know what five stars already give me a good review no i'm just joking but anyways hi i'm tony the crochet designer and educator behind to yarn crafts if you've never seen me before hello I hope I'm all that you hoped and wished for. And today's live is really just a, well, first off, it's an understanding that my clock is crooked, but also it's just a kind of get to know me, let's become friends. If you've only ever watched me here on YouTube, there's a lot we don't know about each other. And I was thinking about that when I was talking to I have this gal at YouTube who kind of helps me as far as like how to get my channel better and all that good stuff. And she's like, Tony. You do this on Instagram already, do it for your YouTube friends. And I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. So hello. I see y'all have already got the where I'm checking in from sorted out already, but I would love to know if you're working on any projects today, and especially if you're working on any projects for Make It Cal 2023. If you're not familiar already, Make It Cal 2023 is my annual crochet along that I do right around this time every year as an excuse for you to use up some good yarn and make something just for yourself. And you can use any TL Yarn Crafts pattern and post about it on Instagram for a chance to win prizes. I see Alaska's here, Texas here, New York's here, Oregon's here, Belgium's here. Wow, Indiana's here, Central New York is here. Whoa, oh, somebody's working on a Joan Granny sweater. That's exciting. San Diego is here, hey. I wonder if, so, the person who, oh my gosh, these comments are coming in fast and furious. How do people do this? Sorry, I'm new to this platform and uh, I'm going to have to slow this train on down. So somebody says they're making a Tunisian crochet cow with elements simply satin. I bet that's really pretty. Hello there. I watched a couple of your videos and you got me started on crocheting. Love from Italy. Hello, friends in Italy. Wow. I think we're going to have a really great time. So kind of a layout for today, just so you know what to expect is clearly I'm going to start off by rambling a bunch. And then I'm going to get into kind of telling my story a bit and what TL Yarn Crafts is all about. Um, and then we're going to dive straight into your questions. We're going to wrap up today with a giveaway. I bet you weren't expecting that. But I have these beautiful bags that I got from my friends at Beautiful Sister. So I have these two gorgeous bags. So I'm going to tell you more about how I came to know this company. And then I'm going to give away both of these lovely project bags. So let's kick things off with a short version of my life story, at least my crochet life story. Okay. Um, did that see? Oh, I'm like looking at the names. Oh, I see my friend Chris Berry is here. Congratulations on winning the week two Mickey Cow um, giveaway, Chris. She is our lucky winner from last week. She won um, She won a set of Tunisian crochet hooks from Denise Interchangeables. And I'm so excited for you to try them. They're fantastic. So here is my crochet life story. So I first picked up crochet when I was 13 years old. I'm going to keep it brief because I know some of you have heard this before. I'm 13 years old. Set the scene. 13 years old, I have two brothers who were both away for the summer doing other kids' summer things. I was home with my mom. My dad is off in the military. Or no, he's at work. And I'm just like putzing around with no sense of direction, right? I got I got nothing on my to-do list. And it's driving my mom crazy because my mom was born with a to-do list. I feel like that now, but it didn't always feel that way. <laughs> So I'm like buzzing around like a fly and my mom's like, okay, I'm going to give you something to do. And my mom is incredibly talented. Um, if you don't follow her already, her account on Instagram is by Gwen's design and she just makes all the things, mostly knit and crochet. So she started a granny square, put it in my hands and told me to keep going. And I still remember that phrase specifically because when she said it, I was like, that don't make no sense. Like, what do you mean keep going? It's just a square. Keep going for what? What is going to happen? But I trusted the process because I trust my mom. And I, here we go. Then I can sit back, girl. It's been a long day. <laughs> so I trusted the process and I kept going with my granny square. And it turned into this awful, wonky, gorgeous, 
blanket. And I just remember being so proud of myself. Just think of who you were at 13, how much you maybe felt like you hadn't accomplished, hadn't done the talents you feel like you don't have, the direction, sense of direction that you feel like you don't have, right? But I just made something with my own hands and it wasn't terrible. Like it was ugly because the yarn was ugly. It was like, I'm sure you've worked with it before. It's that red heart camouflage with like the greens and browns and tans and I don't know. I just, I, I've never liked that yarn, but I made it. So I'm excited about that. And I like relish the fact. Now I have no idea where that blanket is. Hopefully it's keeping somebody warm somewhere. But I do know that after I finished that blanket, had that super sense of accomplishment, something about my Gemini brain was like, you know what? We've conquered this. We don't need to do it again. And I put crochet down for 10 entire years. Didn't even think about it. Didn't cross my mind. <laughs> Until I was 23 years old. Now, new scene, Columbus, Ohio. I am 23 years old. I just got married. I just moved out of my home state, I moved away from my family. I just graduated with my master's degree, which several counselors along the way told me that getting a master's degree was like a guaranteed job. Lies. It's 2010. And the U.S. economy is in the toilet and nobody is trying to hire recent graduates with no experience. But nobody told me that. So I'm feeling a bit unmoored. I'm feeling directionless again, sensing a theme. And I needed something to just kind of put me back on track. Remind me that I'm moving in a forward direction because I was just feeling very stagnant. Um, so I go to the craft store because I'm like, maybe I need a hobby. I started off by getting a bunch of beading supplies. Um, didn't work out. I don't know if you recall back in 2010, if you were around at the time, <laughs> that there were these Chan Lu bracelets and it was like leather cording and beads with these kind of like simple but somehow intricate patterns. And I tried that out and it was fun. I made a couple bracelets for myself, but like I was like, this is just going to take forever. This is too tedious. I need to be at a table. Like I need something that's a little bit more comfortable. So I go back to the craft store and I ended up in the yarn aisle. And there was like a feeling that washed over me. And I was like, I'm home. Like this makes sense. I feel that this is the right choice. Just by turning into the aisle. I hadn't even bought anything. I didn't even have a cart. And I was like, I'm in the right place. So I go get a cart and I did what any other beginner in a craft is, because regardless of the fact that I'd made a project 10 years ago, I was definitely a beginner. And um, I just put everything pretty in that basket. I didn't care about yarn weights. I didn't care about fiber. I didn't care what hooks I needed. I didn't care about nothing. I didn't have a project in mind. I was like, I'm gonna just get this yarn because in this moment, what I need is to take some of this home. I don't need a plan right now. I just need to execute. So I bought all this yarn. I took it home. Half of it I ended up giving to Goodwill or like taking back because I didn't need it. But I accomplished what I needed to that day. And from there, I used YouTube. I used patterns from Etsy. I used whatever resources I could find, books. I went to the library to basically self-teach myself, right? Because crochet is a lot like riding a bike. Once you kind of get back to it, it starts to come back to you. But if you want to do something besides ride in a straight line, you're going to have to do some research and build up those skills. So that's what I did. I spent the next several years making projects, learning how to read patterns again, and just getting back into the groove of being a crocheter. Uh, fast forward maybe a couple years and I have been making projects and things for friends and family. I've been donating things to charity. I've been making stuff for myself and for my husband. And eventually it got to the point where folks were like, you know what, girl? <laughs> We good on them hats and scarves. I still got the one you made me last year. Like, you don't have to make another one. And I was like, I'm going to take the hit. <laughs> I'm going to take that hit. And I get that family and friends maybe don't need anything else. Fine. So I was like, what's the next step? Because I'm going to keep crocheting and I don't have the capacity to use all these things myself because I was very into accessories like hats, scarves, um, gloves. Boot cuffs were a really big thing now, which I hear are coming back again. And I'm like, because next year y'all ain't going to dig them things out of your closet and use them again. Like, I don't know, but to each her own, their own, whatever. Um, my mom's Instagram is at by Gwen's design, G-W-E-N-S design. So 
uh, wait, where the, oh, are y'all talking about, okay. Super quick pause from the story. Let me address the issue with spam accounts in my comments. First off, I'm very sorry. I did not know it was happening um, because these were replies. So when I go to like reply to comments myself, when I look like on the back end of YouTube to reply to comments, those don't pop up. So I didn't know it was happening. Um, but I was made aware that a couple people had actually like contacted that, replied to that person, logged into Telegram, like gave them all their information and they got spammed out of some money. I'm really sorry that that happened to you. But there's not a whole lot that I can do. But what I did recently do, and hopefully the spammers aren't in here because then they're going to switch up their tactics. But I want you to know that I've taken this seriously, is I went in the back end of YouTube and there's a way that I can um, block certain words from being in comments. And I blocked one of the words that the spammer used regularly. So fingers crossed, at least that scam can't get played in my comments anymore. But I have a new video coming out on Sunday, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. And I'm really, really sorry that I didn't get to it sooner. But anyways, back to the story. So I got all this stuff that I'm making, and I'm like, I'm not going to start stop making hats and scarves, so what am I going to do with them? Next logical idea is sell them at craft shows. And that's what I did. So <laughs> my first craft show <laughs> was in a literal church basement. Um, in the same gymnasium where they were having a garage sale. So this is how like this is how it's set up. So it's this big rectangular gymnasium around the outside where all these vendors trying to actually sell their stuff. And the whole center of the gym is a giant garage sale where people have dumped stuff on tables and you get anything you want for a dollar. Well, let me tell you from a marketing perspective why that's a really poor choice, because the people who want to go to a garage sale and spend a dollar on something used are not the people that want to spend $20 on a handmade hat. It's not the same audience, right? Um, so it didn't, didn't go well, but silver lining, because there are there's always one for me. Silver lining, I sold one thing, and you couldn't tell me. I wasn't killing it. I went and got like my favorite dinner afterwards. Like it was a whole thing. So what I feel like I took from that, even though it wasn't very much money, but what I took from it was experience. I got a better understanding of how to set up a craft show booth, how to price my things properly, how to edit the items in my booth to make it easier to sell them. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. I've been doing a lot of talking today. <clears throat> I got a lot of insight on how I could do this better the next time. And I felt like that was almost more valuable than selling more stuff that day. Like that, I went there to learn a lesson, right? And I learned it. I took that away. I've always felt like no experience is wasted. An experience is only wasted if you didn't learn something. There's a lot of double negatives going on there, but you know what I'm saying. There's always value in an experience. And that value might just be in learning a lesson. So I did. And over the next several years, I honed my skills around uh, selling at craft shows. I started selling at bigger and better shows, shows that you had to pay $100, $200, $300 to even get into, but you'd walk away with $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 if you have the capacity to make the stuff. Now, let me remind you, though, that every single thing I'm selling in my booth, I am making by hand myself. Right. So I had to balance out how much things cost versus how much time I was taking to create everything. And for a couple of years, I had a craft show every single weekend. So Sunday, so I would take a so I would have a show on Saturday. I'd take a break on Sunday, Monday through Friday, probably all the way up to Saturday morning. I'm prepping for the show. And I got a day job. Miss doing the most. Always. So, uh, but I loved it. I enjoyed it. And if anybody else was selling at craft shows in 2016, I hope that little fairy dust that was going around hit you because there was something special about 2016. We were all swimming in it. Like it was a, it was just a great year. Um, so regardless, craft shows happened, which I'm really enjoying. And eventually I started posting the stuff that I was selling at my craft shows on Instagram. And I started getting these messages of like, oh, that hat is so cute. Is there a pattern? And in my head, I'm like, 
wrong question. You need to be asking what show I'm selling this at so you can come buy it. But eventually I realized that I was attracting makers and not buyers on Instagram. And often with crafts, you're going to have a balance between the makers and the buyers if you're selling things. And I've realized that about social media. I also realized that if I'm engaging with this different audience, I can switch up my message. And there's a lot of opportunity there. When you're speaking to buyers, there's really just one conversation to have. And that's how can I shorten the distance between you and this thing you want to buy? When you're talking to makers and other people who are knowledge seekers in your industry, you have the opportunity to educate and you have the opportunity to sell. And if you are creating enough basis of education and guiding them towards the product that's going to solve their solution, solve their problem, I mean, you kind of have a golden ticket. So I started to lean into that. And that's when I started designing because several of the pieces that I had in my craft show booth I had made, but they were not based off of patterns. So I had like hats and scarves and I kind of came up with these ideas because I knew that there was a hole in my lineup. And I needed to create products to fill that hole. People were asking like, oh, this scarf's really cute. Do you have a matching hat? Or these gloves are really cute. You know, what about an ear warmer? Like people were asking about that stuff. So I was creating it, but not based off patterns. And then I would share it on Instagram and people were asking about the patterns. So eventually um, I created a pattern called the Mega Palm Beanie. That was the first pattern I ever created. And it exploded like so many people were making that hat at the time and I just my mind was blown because I never considered for a moment being a crochet designer so I'm gonna I'm gonna start wrapping this story up because it's, it's fairly long and we're still kind of at the beginning <laughs> so I move into design and I started making more things and every time I would create something for my craft show booth I would share about it on Instagram I would make the patterns available um, eventually I transitioned to having you know my own online shop like I started off on Etsy and then I got my own shop and I set up a blog and my whole presence was online but I was selling directly to makers as opposed to buyers. Um, I eventually phased out all physical product from my online shops. Um, I also stopped doing craft shows eventually in 2018. I'm going to tell you exactly, exactly why I stopped. So 2018, I was leaving a show that went really well. But one of the things that nobody talks about when you do craft shows is how exhausting the loadout process is. And many of these shows I used to do on my own because I just never felt quite right asking somebody to give up their Saturday just to sit next to me and help me make money. So um, could you ever do charts for your patterns? Mm, I don't know. It's not a skill of mine, so I, I don't want to do them poorly, but some of them have them. But I'll, I'll consider it. Thank you, Lori. Thanks for the recommendation. Um, so I was loading out from a show. I was exhausted. My pockets full of moolah. So, you know, it was a good day. But it was cold because most of my shows I do in the fall and winter. It was cold. And I go to my truck. And at the time, I had a truck where it was like a truck truck, right? Before SUVs became basically station wagons. It was a truck truck. So the way my SUV was set up is you had to, um, you could, not had to, but you um, could open the top, wait, no. What I was trying to do is I was trying to open the whole trunk, right, to get into the trunk. But one of the pistons that like holds the trunk up, one of them just went kaput, just didn't work. So I had to hold up my trunk door as I'm trying to load totes, giant totes full of yarny stuff and all of my craft show set up into my car. And I was like, you know what? That's the straw. That's the straw that's breaking this camel's back. I'm done with craft shows. I'm not doing another one. And I didn't. And that was 2018. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to transition out of doing shows, which were a lot of money at the time, um, if I'm going to transition out of this, I got to find something to fill that hole. And that's when the designing became hot and heavy. And it's also when I started to transition into the education piece. And that's where, that's where I really started falling in love with crochet. I think I was in love with business and generating some side income, but I really started to fall in love with crochet when I started to teach it to other people. Because you have that moment when somebody finally gets what you're saying, when you say it the right way that they need to hear it for it to click. I mean, it's probably what taking drugs feels like. I don't know. It's great. So 
Fast forward, I'm, I'm teaching at yarn stores and I then I started my YouTube channel in 2017 when I learned about Tunisian crochet. I can tell you that story another time because that one's really long. And essentially things just kind of started to fall in place from there because I really felt like I was on the path I was meant to be to move forward in this craft business. Fast forward to 2017, um, I still have a day job. I started TL Yarn Crafts in 2013. I didn't quit my day job till 2017. Three, four, five, six. That's four years of side hustling, of up all nights, of watching every movie like this, like just listening to movies. I wasn't even watching any movies at that point. And um, TL Yarn Crafts was clipping along, but my day job, my day job was also clipping along. So every part of my personality that you experienced with TL Yarn Crafts, I gave that directly to my day job as well, because whatever I take on, I need to do it to the best of my ability. So I was at this place where with my day job, they were starting this new department. My boss was about to go head that department. I adored her. I love like the best boss I've ever had. And she's like, I want to take you over to this department with me. And I was like, this is going to be great. And then on the TL Yarn Craft side of things, companies like nitpicks, lion brand, like all these companies were like, hey, we want to work with you. We think you're fantastic. And I was like, wow, I love that. Like, sure, let's make it happen. Eventually I got to the point where I couldn't do both anymore. And I was getting really stressed out because I had deadlines at work and I had deadlines in my craft business. And I was like, it's reaching a breaking point. I only have 24 hours in the day and I need to... <clears throat> I got to I got to make a decision. I'm at the most beautiful fork in a road I've ever seen. Go do this wonderful job that I know that I'm going to love, support this company that's taken really good care of me and this boss who is just immaculate or come over here and pursue my crafty passions and just love on folks and just pour into them as often as I can. Impossible decision. Not impossible honestly because when it came down to it I was like I might not have an opportunity to do this again, to do this again, right? And I and it got to the point where it's like, I have to decide which decision I would regret the most. Um, and I would have regretted not pursuing this the most because I think you never work as hard as you will for yourself. And when you work hard for yourself, the benefits are actual benefits. It's not just, you know, the chintzy little coffee mug and sweatshirt that a company might give you a little pat on the back, a little gift card around Christmas time. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I can do more and, and get more satisfaction from doing it myself um, than I knew I would get from doing this for my day job. So I quit my job. And um, yeah, you know, if I was here in 2017, I was here <laughs> like Six months later, I was working like a crazy person because I was like, I quit my job. I lost those benefits. I lost the benefit of a, a biweekly paycheck. Um, so I need to work as hard as possible to make sure I make all that money back. And I did. And that's what finds us here. You know, having the freedom of not going to my day job anymore gave me the opportunity to start my YouTube channel, um, to pursue designing even further, to sign up for all of these amazing collaborations, to travel around the country so far, hopefully around the world eventually. Um, well, I guess around the world counts because I've been to Canada, but like, you know, I want to go a little further. Um, but yeah, so that's what brings us here. I do want to answer one quick question. This one is from Jane Waters and she's like, what was your husband's reaction? So I'm going to tell you that brief story and then I'm going to answer you guys' questions and then we'll do our giveaway. So I remember when I was contemplating quitting my day job and it was just something I never expected to do. Like I am from that generation of people that's like, you go to school, you go to college, you get a job, you work until you retire, you live off your social security and your pension or whatever money comes out of that. Like that's what I thought the path was. So I was so conflicted when it came time to decide to quit my day job and once I came to the decision that I was even open to it, I was like, I got to clear this with my husband because it's just the two of us. And we were both banking on having that regular dual income. So I finally go to my husband and I'm like, I'm thinking about quitting my day job. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, what? Because at the time, at the time, 
I could see from the outside looking in that crochet still looked very much like a hobby. Like I was doing it, you know, in the evenings and weekends and I would get really excited about it and talk to my friends about it and post about it on social media. And like my husband was seeing the income I was generating from it at the time. And I mean, at that point, it's been like four years, like I'm in it. But um, he had a tough time wrapping his head around how this could be a viable career. And I understood that because he's from the same generation I am. The folks that said you go to school, you get a job and you work that job the rest of your life. So it took a little convincing. And I think in the process of convincing him, I also further convinced myself. Um, so when I hit him with the line, like, I would regret not going this way. I have this opportunity and I feel like I need to push it. And I also told him, like, we'll give this a year. If I'm not generating the same income of my day job within a year, we'll scrap it. Um, that ended up not being a problem. <laughs> Thankfully, but that's because I was, I mean, I don't even think I went out for drinks for like 12 solid months. Like I was in the house working, working. So great question. I'm glad you asked that. Okay. Ooh. Oh, somebody said, please make sure you pay into social security. Absolutely. I agree. Um, one of the things that I decided to do later in my business is I set up um, a separate LLC for TL Yarncrafts and I signed myself on as an employee. So that allows me to pay myself a salary and also pay into social security. So even as an artist, I still have that, that cushion, right? Tea or coffee? Oh, it's coffee today, honey. I made a fresh pot of coffee at 2.30 this afternoon. <laughs> it's been a day, y'all. It's been a day. <laughs> So I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Thank you for allowing me 26 entire minutes to ramble on about my life story. But I'm so grateful that that whole confluence of events has brought me here to be spending a little bit of a Monday evening with you. It's just never expected it. <laughs> never expected it to go this way. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of scroll down. Uh, Cole can make this shock song fall. I almost broke a finger on my engagement. Oh, Tiffany's talking about when her trunk wasn't working. So she said, um, cold can make those shocks fail. And it probably was the cold because it's the middle of December. Because I always did my best shows like a week or two before Christmas for all the, like the last minute shoppers or whatever. Um, but yeah, you got to be really careful with those trunks, man. Like I didn't, I, that had never happened to me before. So when I went to go lift my trunk, like usually once it gets to a certain level, it'll lift itself the rest of the way. And I got it to that level and that thing started coming back down. I was like, wait, whoa. What's going on here? Oh, it was a whole thing. I was like, I was too through. Like I was already tired. And by 2018, it was getting to the point where like being at a craft show all day was taking a toll on my body. Like my back was hurting. My shoulders was hurting. Like my hips would hurt. I was already very sedentary crocheting all day long. And then my day job, I was at a computer. So then sitting at a craft show booth, like sitting and then standing, sitting and then standing and like lugging stuff in and out. My body was like, girl, we got, there's gotta be an easier way. Um, so this question is from Savannah. She says, how do you deal with or prevent things like tendonitis when crocheting all the time? So I personally don't deal with that issue. I do occasionally have some tightness within my wrist or my hand, but that typically has to do with either how I'm holding my hook or the, um, the fiber that I'm working with or like the material of my hook. So on the first point, the way that I'm holding my hook, particularly with Tunisian crochet, I have to tension my hand properly. If my tension is too loose, it makes this hand that's holding the hook work too hard. So I have to make sure my tension is right on my left hand. Also, if it's too tight, it makes this hand work too hard. So it's definitely a balancing act. It's a little dance. Now, on the other hand, when I... Um, when I don't pair the material of the crochet hook with the material of the yarn properly, it my hand starts screaming. So for example, when I'm working with acrylic yarn, I cannot use a plastic hook. My hand will start like, rah, like, please stop. And it's something about that plastic on plastic. It kind of sends a vibration through your hand, which just can aggravate issues if you have them. So I'm very conscious about switching up the material of my hook based on the yarn that I'm using. And that's why I have so many crochet hooks. They're right here. Two big old things full of crochet hooks of every material. I've got plastic. I got wood. I got metal in all of my sizes. So I always have what I need depending on the project. Great question. Um, 
Let's see. Where are the rest of the question? Oh, that was the one from Jane asking about my husband's reaction and wanting to quit my job. <laughs> um, this one is from Regina Wick. She said, has your husband picked up crochet, crochet to blanket, etc." No, the furthest I've got him to do because he thought this would be funny is to read a crochet pattern. And if I can go back and find that video, I might post it to like my shorts or something because it's actually really funny. Like he don't know what none of this means. And I feel like even people with the best of intentions have trouble reading crochet patterns. So he um, he's a funny guy and he he definitely made that a very funny experience. So um, I'll see if I can find that video. But short answer, no. I've never been able to get him on the crochet train. And I feel like every time I ask him, <laughs> it's more of a firm no. Um, let me see. Oh, Elsie uh, says I should come to Loop Yarn Shop in London, UK and run a workshop with them. I would love to have them reach out to me because uh, plane tickets ain't cheap. So <laughs> I would love to, but I have been doing a lot more traveling and teaching workshops. And I'm hoping at some point uh, that will take me internationally. Uh, one of the things on my crafty bucket list is getting to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival and like other international yarn festivals. Like yarn festivals are such a treat to me. And I feel like overseas, they will do it just a bit different. Like you get a chance to see different things and experience how different yarny folk execute an event like that. And I would love to see it. I would love to. Uh, Julie Berg says, do you crochet every day or so? Do you crochet every day? You get burnt out and have to take a few days break. Rarely. Rarely do I get burnt out on crocheting itself because I usually have many projects going at a time. So like right now I have my temperature blanket. I have this granny sweater that I'm working on. You guys want to see it? Um, so I can share some of my whips with you. So this is why I don't get bored because I have so many projects going on. So I'm making one of those hexagon sweaters. I think I talked about it in like my podcast episode. So here's one side so far. And here's the other side. I was talking about this on my Instagram live that this side is feeling much more colorful than this side. And I'm kind of fine with it. Like maybe this is going to be a, I don't know kind of like a dual personality type sweater. Like one side is really colorful and jazzy and the other side is like a little bit more subdued and muted. So there's that, there's my temperature blanket. I'm working on some secret projects that I'm not allowed to talk to you about, but keep an eye out. I'm also working on my Make It Cow project. I always have multiple projects going on. So no, I never get burnt out on crocheting. I could crochet all day, every day. And I think there are people out there that think running a crochet business means crocheting all day, every day, but actually it doesn't. Um, I've gotten all of about 20 minutes of crochet in today, and that was to finish getting the content for Sunday's video. <laughs> so I have not worked on any actual projects today. Yeah. Um, let me see. Okay, I'm going to get some more questions. Uh, I love how positive you are. Thank you. Any plans to release more to niche? Oh, wait. Oh, no. It jumped all the way to the bottom. Uh, have you considered teaching Tunisian crochet design? I'm working on my first Tunisian crochet tee for myself. I get this question a lot, like looking at creating content, not so much around teaching the technique, but teaching how to design with the technique. And I'm hesitant to do that because in all honesty, when I'm designing, there's still a lot of stuff that I'm figuring it out. Like, even with this Tunisian crochet shawl right here, like I could give you a general like format, but I also have to like protect my livelihood. So if I tell you how I design patterns and then I'm like, hey, I just designed this pattern. You're going to be like, no, nah, I don't need to buy it. I know how to do that. Like, so it's an odd balance. So it's not that I'm gatekeeping information. I look at it like I'm protecting my livelihood. This is my day job and I need to I need to get to a more comfortable place within my design situation before I can pass that information along. But not to say that there aren't resources out there, they're just probably not gonna come from me. And I hope you can respect that and appreciate that and understand that I still have a lot of other things to give you, but just not that, okay? I love you though. Never heard of a yarn festival, honey. Go to Google, search yarn festival nearby, and see what comes up and go to just any one of them. If you're in the Ohio area, I strongly recommend, oh gosh, what is it called? A wool gathering. So wool gathering is in, it's that city that Dave Chappelle lives in. It's like out in the country. It's literally on a dairy farm. 
which I think is just so Ohio of them. And uh, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, I would go to Rhinebeck. I mean, East Coast. I would go to Rhinebeck up in New York. That one's in October. And then if you're on the West Coast, I'm pretty sure Stitches has a um, marketplace that you could go to. So that's really akin to a, a yarn festival. So check those out. Um, I'm coming to your local yarn store in May. Exciting. I do visit yarn stores throughout the year um, to do workshops. So if you are, if your local yarn store is Wool and Honey, Sisters Arts in uh, Chicago, Be Woolen in Minneapolis. Um, let me think. Let me look at my calendar real quick. I'm going to tell you where I'm going to be. Oh, okay. So I'm going to be at Spun in Ann Arbor. That'll be the first one for the spring season. That'll be on March 11th. And then I have a Floxy workshop the following weekend. That's online. That's all about color in your projects. That one's going to be so much fun. Then I have Sister Arts in Chicago the following weekend, which I'm very excited about. Um, then I'm going to be at Midwest Craft Con in Columbus. If you are an aspiring creative entrepreneur, go to Midwest Craft Con. I'm going to be the keynote, which is just blows my mind because like the people that run Midwest Craft Con are also the people that ran one of the biggest craft shows that I tried to get into Ohio. Probably like three years, I got a no, and then I finally got a yes. And I'm like, now a few years later, I'm keynoting one of their biggest events. And I'm like, talk about growth. They're great. Um, let me see. Then I'm going to be with Chicks, Chicks with Sticks. Um, and I'll be with them in April and then Wool and Honey the weekend after that. Then I'm doing a virtual retreat with Webs the weekend after that. It's going to be a very busy spring. And then I'll be at Be Woolen in May and then H&H, &H, which is in Chicago in June. And then that'll be it for the spring. So that was a lot that I went through, but I do have an events page up on tlyarncrafts.com. And then once most of the details for these events get sorted out, it'll it'll go up there. Okay, let me answer a few more questions and we'll do our giveaway. Mm -hmm. Have you ever crocheted amigurumi? Yes, but I'm like quite bad at it. <laughs> so I don't do that much. Have you ever tried knitting? Yes. Technically, I know how to knit. But um, the motivation to keep at it and continue learning and like build my foundation is not quite there just yet, but it will be like learning to knit properly, like having a proper understanding of like reading patterns and completing a pattern I want to do this year. And then also sewing. Those are like the two big crafts that I want to experiment with this year. Do you still stay in touch with Sarah Jane of Bella Coco? Um, not directly. Like she and I are certainly colleagues. And I heard about her leaving Crochet Society, which I'm like, growth girl, you got it. Sometimes we might have the best intentions of sticking around with a certain project. But as times change and our priorities change, our lives and, and personal situations change, we got to make moves within our business. Um, I know that our audience gets excited and looks forward to us being in certain places, but you know, you got to make, you got to make change where necessary. And when you're the face of your own business, that might mean disappointing people sometimes. So, you know, I know a lot of people are bummed about that decision she made, but as soon as I heard it, I was like, bigger and better things, girl. Can't wait. Like, I'm really, really excited for her. Do you ever get overwhelmed by how many whips you have? Like how many, like too many loose ends going? Um, not really. I have an entire level of my closet right here. That's all works in progress. And there's probably like six things down there. And then I have like my active whips. So no, because typically the projects that are whips are like personal projects. So I don't get hung up on those. I make my way back around to them when I can. Um, but yeah. Oh, let me show y'all this because it's not a poncho. It's a shawl. This is one of my latest patterns. No, it is my latest pattern. My most recent pattern is called the Arvada shawl. I made this one in collaboration with Hugh Loco using the yarns from her Cozy in Colorado collection. Um, so you can check out that pattern. It's up, uh, in my website. Let me see. Let me get a couple more. Qu oh man, there's a lot. Um, Let's see. I'm a knitter, but you have inspired me to pick up crochet and I really enjoy it. I'm glad. And I hope I feel that way about knitting when I get around to it because it's so pretty. And I kind of like the, like, I'm very into like meditative rhythm. So like some like stockinette, maybe in the round, like as little purling as possible would be wonderful, but we'll see. What advice for a person who wants to put out their first Tunisian crochet pattern? My 
main advice is to make sure you run that pattern through a tech editor. <clears throat> now, what a tech editor does is they use their technical knowledge and understanding of pattern standards to make sure that your pattern is soundly written. And what I mean by soundly written is that you can give that pattern to somebody you don't know, somebody who doesn't know you, but they know how to read a knit pattern and they'll be able to follow it from start to finish. That is what a tech editor does. So if you're brand new to crochet, there's brand new to crochet designing. There's probably a lot of stuff that you don't know. And I commend you for wanting to put out your first pattern. Do your due diligence. But also another piece of advice I'm going to give you is to understand that your first pattern very well could be the worst pattern you ever write. But that's okay. Because if it's the worst pattern you ever wrote, that means that you've got multiple other patterns that are better because you stayed the course and continued working on additional projects. So the advice there is do your due diligence, but get that first pattern out of the way. You can always go back and make changes and edits, do better photos, write it differently, change your pattern format. You can always do that stuff, but just get that first one out of the way because there can be a lot of anxiety around putting yourself out there. And just because your first pattern is not strong doesn't mean that that's the end of your design career. That's literally just the beginning. That's my advice. Um, Let's see. Oh, it just jumped to the bottom again. Okay. I have the sewing. Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh. These, these comments go really fast. This is new for me. Um, hi, are prim crochet hooks worth the money? Uh, I think so, so far. Like I've tried the plastic prims. I did just get the prims that are metal on top and like a softer handle on bottom. And I'm going to try those out in an upcoming video. But uh, I like the prims plastic hooks. I will say the only thing I can use them for is cotton. Um, I don't like them with wool. It's a little too much drag, but there is a good balance with them with cotton. But that's because of my personal tension. Uh, Rachel says she's working on the Arvada shawl right now. So, so easy to follow and it's gorgeous. Thank you. I love hearing that because when I released this pattern, I was like, man, is this too simple? Are people going to be bored by this? But I actually adored making this. And this was like a not scheduled pattern. The yarn came, I was obsessed with it. And I was like, you know what? I want to make a shawl. And I just started one. Also, it was a chance... Where are those things? It was a chance for me to use the new Sorella metal Tunisian crochet hooks, which I'm like, oh, they're glorious. I love them. They're not perfect, but in the grand scheme of things, they're the best we got and they're pretty darn good. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where that pattern came from. For anyone in the Western United States, I looked it up and Stitches has at home events and two in-person events this year in March and November. So now you know if you're over on the West Coast or somewhere on the Western side of the state because, you know, things are just more spread out over there. Um, yeah, check out Stitches West. I've taught there before and it's just such a good vibe. Everybody's so nice. So nice. Um, let's see. I have the sewing about to learn quilting, but was hopeful you had some knitting tutorials. Listen, let me let me clear things up. Let me deaden the rumors. I'll say it now and I'll eat my words if that changes down the line, but don't expect any kind of educational knitting content from TL Yarn Crafts. I'm planning to learn to knit purely for personal reasons. I do not plan, do not expect any kind of tutorials, Tony version of how to knit like I, I don't plan to add that to my plate. And there's still so much that I'm exploring with crochet. There's still so much I haven't talked about and haven't shared, haven't made tutorials or videos about that. Like, I mean, I'd have to go through a lot of crochet content before I could even make space for knitting. So it is incredibly unlikely that you will ever see educational knit content from TL Yarn Crafts. And I'm sorry if that makes you sad. <laughs> um... Whirly Bird Jr. says, I've also been thinking of starting my own business and my husband supports the idea, but as a stay-at-home mom of two girls, I don't know how to accurately pursue a crafting business. Any advice? I am not the person to give you that advice because I do not have any littles. The littles that I have have four paws and they are mostly self-sufficient. So mama gets a lot of free time to crochet and run her business during the day. Um, if you have two littles around, I don't, I don't know how 
autonomous they are. Like if you're spending a whole lot of time with them, I would assume that you'd have to just really scale down what it is that you plan to produce. Like I produce patterns and I do videos and I do in-person classes and I've written a book and I do a lot of social media stuff. And I only can do that because this is my full-time day job. Um, if you were planning to pursue this, I would almost recommend you getting some kind of childcare. And if that cost of childcare doesn't offset you being, you know, a full-time maker, it might not be worth pursuing as a business. Now, I will say this as well. If it doesn't need to be a business, like keep it a hobby, right? Like you could run a thriving social media account and potentially make money that way. But does it need to be a whole entire business? Not necessarily. No, it doesn't. There are certain parts of my crafting life that I keep completely private and maybe I'll share them in my stories or something, but not everything I do goes into the monetized side of my business. So, you know, maybe just keep it a hobby, at least till your girls get a little bit bigger. You know, you don't want to miss this stuff anyway. This is the good stuff. Who are some of your favorite designers right now? Oh man, that's always tough when I get that question because <laughs> my brain goes blank. Um, the first person that always comes to mind for me, especially because they're one of my really good friends, is Alexi or Alexandra of Two of Wands. So she does knit and crochet patterns that range from beginner to intermediate. She's just a wizard with color. And she's also has like a professionally educated background in design. So she has a perspective and she has a design sense that is so well honed and so like legit that when I sit and listen to her talk about like crafting and designing, I'm just like soaking it all in. Cause I'm like, I'm not about to go get a four year degree in textile design. So anything you have to provide, let me know. Um, who else? Man, I really like a lot of those makers that came out of kind of that era with Lion Brand. So like Make and Do Crew, um, Two of Wands, uh, uh, was it Mama? Um, oh, God. I'm seeing their faces and I can't remember their names. But like Make and Do Crew, like a lot of them, like they were really, there was this very inventive and exciting era in crochet and knit design that was like simple and straightforward, but it wasn't like boring and every day. I think there's been a shift in what folks are looking for in crochet design and the audience that was very much like the audience that we were speaking to probably back in like 2015, 2018, 2019 is very different than the audience we're speaking to now. So, you know, those are some of my favorite designers because of their technical abilities and their ingenuity and their creativity. But I mean, there are folks that are designing right now, which I'm like, where the hell did you pull that idea from? Like, because it's so good and it's so different. It's something I never would have thought of. Like there are trends happening in the crochet space that I'm like, I mean, I'm never going to make a sweater without a body that's just sleeves. But I mean, if you like it, I love it. It's different and not especially practical, but somehow it makes sense. And there's a lot of pieces coming out like that right now that I'm like, I kind of have to readjust my perspective on, you know, what my audience might be looking for. I'm definitely going to stick to my creative roots, but I think it lends me an opportunity to be a little bit more adventurous in my designing. So that's a really long way of saying that I can appreciate what these newer designers are doing. And um, it's kind of adjusting my perspective. And I love that. Do you plan on designing crochet items for cats? No. And I'm actually also getting a dog soon-ish. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but soon-ish. And I probably am not going to be designing things for dogs either. My target design demo is like, adult women. Okay. Female silhouettes, adult stuff, because that's what I am. And I'm making stuff that I would like to see in my own closet. That's my motivation. Um, uh, so folks are making recommendations of like knitters that I can look up on YouTube. And I appreciate that. I'm not planning to get into knitting super duper soon. I'm in a very productive season, not so much in a learning and exploratory season, but hopefully by like late spring when I get some of my, you know, appearances, you know, sorted out and some of the other big projects that I have planned this year, once things quiet down a little bit. Um, 
yeah, I'm hoping to pursue knitting. This one, this question is from Christian Pennington. How important is it to swatch? Incredibly. And you should do it often, if not every single time you make something. Sometimes swatching is not as important, but it's never unimportant. I'll say that. Have you ever wanted to do crochet and pattern crochet pattern collaboration with your mom? I think it would be an awesome idea. We've talked about that many times, and we actually have an opportunity coming up to work together. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted for sure. Uh, do you have any tips on where to start with Tunisian crochet? I'm really interested, but it looks really difficult. Literally watch any of my earliest videos. I have one on color changes, on stitches, on the absolute beginner's guide to Tunisian crochet. Like I have... I have uh, created the pathway for you to start exploring Tunisian crochet with all of the tutorials that I have. You can go to my playlist on Tunisian crochet and just start at the top and let them play. Um, yeah. What content would you recommend focusing on creating when just starting out? Um, anything that's geared towards beginners. Like you have to decide what kind of learner you are. If you're the kind of learner that wants to learn the basics of the craft, like learning the basic stitches and understanding the technical side, or if you're somebody who wants to jump right into a project, I don't think there's a wrong answer, but I do think either path you choose, they need to converge at some point. So if you start with the techniques, you need to eventually get to working on a pattern. If you start with the pattern, you eventually need to get to the point where you understand the technique so you can actually know what you're doing and also know how to do it, if that makes sense. Why are you so wholesome? Aw, that's really sweet. I think I'm so wholesome because in the back of my mind, I think about the fact that I have an eight-year-old niece who I want to teach to crochet someday. And if she's ever watching my videos, I want her to feel comfortable in that space. So I keep my videos mostly wholesome because she's my inspiration. I think about that a lot. You know, if I was, if I was saying all these things to my eight-year-old niece, how would I want to say them? And, and how do I say them in a way where like she feels comfortable in that space and that I'm, you know, being a good auntie. That's that's why. Mama in a stitch. Yes, that's who I was talking about. I was like, I don't know what my brain was trying to go to like mama knows best. I'm like, no, it's, that's not it. You know who I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, I'm going to try and get towards the beginning. And then I think at 5.55, so in three minutes, we're going to do the giveaway. The giveaway did not happen yet. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do in just a moment. Um, you should do a class on Tunisian crochet on Skillshare. Um... Do I have, no, I don't have Tunisian crochet on Skillshare. I have regular crochet on Skillshare, but I do have a class on Tunisian crochet on the crafters box. That one comes with a kit. I also have many kits with Lion Brand. Like, however easy of a process you need this to be, I probably have a product that I've created, whether that's a piece of content or an actual something that you can buy to teach you there. You should do a class. Oh, I read that already. Um, I am struggling with learning how to read patterns. Any ideas on how to learn? look up some tutorial videos on how to read patterns. Like you guys are already on YouTube. This is like one of the best places to look for the answers that you're looking for. I think sometimes when y'all ask me those questions, you're essentially saying, I'm having trouble, make me some content. And I, I received that, but I have to make it on a schedule that makes sense for me. So while I have, I have not created any video content on learning how to read patterns, it is something that is on my list and I'm hoping to get to sooner than later. But like, like I've said, my list of ideas with crochet is so long. Like there's so much I want to share with y'all. And really my only limitation is that there are only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to get to the beginning. I mean, the bottom of the comments really quick and we'll do our story. Um, Let's see. Does not seem as hard as you think. Get the book and some cheaper hooks and just play with it. Oh, so Sandra was basically saying that Tunisian crochet is not as hard as you think. And I would 100% agree. If you already know how to crochet, you could pick up Tunisian crochet tonight. Um, if you know how to make a chain, even just a chain, you don't even know how to do any stitches yet. You could pick up Tunisian crochet like by the weekend. If you don't know how to make a chain yet, give yourself maybe two weeks because you really need to master and understand how to make a good tension chain because that is the base of your entire Tunisian crochet project. But if you already know how to crochet, I challenge you, if you've got literally an hour, 
because that's how long my Absolute Beginner's Guide to Tunisian Crochet video is. And it's an hour because you can think of it like an in-person workshop. Like I'm going in there, I'm educating you on Tunisian crochet. I'm talking to you about the tools. I'm breaking down the technique. I'm taking you through stitches. I'm showing you how to bind off. I'm talking to you about curling. Like that basic information you need to know about Tunisian crochet. That's why that video is so powerful and why I'm so glad that I made it. It was the first video I ever made on this channel. And production value, six out of 10. Breadth of knowledge in that video, 10 out of 10. Easy to say. I can, I can humble brag myself because that's a good video. And if I was starting to learn Tunisian crochet, that's the one I would watch. Do you have any videos on learning to read charts? No, I don't. I don't. Um, ooh, it keeps jumping. I love your yarn snob reviews and other product reviews, but me being nosy and wanting some dirt has to ask if companies have ever reached out to you after at with not so positive reviews. Great question. Ooh, get to the T. Get a little spicy. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So she's basically saying, have I ever kind of like low-key shaded a company and they reached out because they were upset? No, because I let folks know ahead of time if I'm doing a yarn snob review, especially if it's in collaboration with them, like, hey, I'm doing this. And one of the things I pride myself on is being honest in my reviews. And if I don't like the yarn, I'm going to say I don't like it. I'm going to give it a low score because it's not for me. And one of the reasons I do the yarn snob review and I wait till all the way at the end to give my rating is because I want folks to really have the opportunity to make their own decision. The things that I sometimes gripe about with the yarn, other folks might be like, this is not it big of a deal. I have a very sensitive, a, sen a very high sensitivity around my crochet practice. Aesthetics are super important to me. Like I like what I'm looking at to be very pretty, whether that's the hook, whether it's my nails, whether it's the yarn, whether it's the setting that I'm crocheting in, it helps me to submerse myself in the experience if my, my tools and my surroundings are aesthetically pleasing to me, right? Um, tension is a really huge part of this process. So switching out my tools and switching out my yarns to make sure my tension is right is important. So everything I talk about in a yarn style review has to do with the sensitivity I have around my personal crochet experience. So I don't expect somebody to just blindly make a decision about a yarn purchase because I said so. I would hope that, you know, in the course of being entertained by these videos, um, you're also kind of taking in what I'm saying and take it with a grain of salt because your experience might be completely different than mine. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel about it. I've never gotten that feedback from a company that they were upset about something I said about their yarn. Um, and if I did, like, I'd apologize that they felt that way, but I'm not going to take back what I said because I meant it, you know? All right, friends. Uh, let's just, oh. Oh, good question. So this is, let me see if I can pronounce this name properly. Charanya? Charanya Ashwin? Or Ashwin? I don't know. But they said, any interesting Tunisian projects other than wearables? 100%. This one's Tunisian crochet. This temperature blanket's Tunisian crochet based off another Tunisian crochet project that I have that's a blanket. Um, this one's Tunisian crochet. Let me show you. This is my Make It Cow project. This one's a shawl. So I love blankets and I love shawls. And I have a lot of designs for Tunisian crochet in both of them, but also wearables too. All right, let's talk giveaway. So short story. Um, a couple of years ago, my friend Vincent and I, so Vincent of Vesuvio's Crafts, he's an amazing crochet and knitwear designer, also just one of my favorites. Um, he and I are super close and we wanted to do a yarn swap ahead of uh, Rhinebeck. I want to say this was like 2019 or maybe 20, no, because I don't think they had in 21. So it must have been 2019. And one of the things that he gave me in that yarn swap was this cute as heck bag from this company called Beautiful Sister. Beautiful Sisters? Beautiful Sister. So it's beautiful, spelled normally, and then sister spelled with a Y instead of an I. So he gave me this gorgeous bag, and I love it because it's very different than the other project bags I had. I love that it didn't have any snaps, any zips. 
Um, Cause I'm just always really nervous around zippers with yarn. That's why I like get bigger bags so I can push the project down. Cause if I ever got my project stuck in a zipper, it's never happened to me, but it's like a really real anxiety for me. But anyways, so he gave me this super cute bag. You see it? It's kind of like a cube at the bottom with this nice wide handle up top. And essentially what you can do is you put your project in there and then you fold these sides in and they just kind of nestle into each other and they hold on to your yarn. Now, if you get jostled, like clearly they're going to fall out, but it's enough to be able to like tuck this over your arm and like crochet while you're walking or you're like, you're on the treadmill or whatever, or like, you know, just like, put it on the ground, like what I do, because I don't, I don't do either of those things, crochet walking or on the treadmill. I, I don't. My crochet is a very sedentary pro Hi, do you want to come say hi? We have a special guest. There are 860 people here. Come say hi. This is my husband. His name is Janad and he's so sweet. He's my favorite person in the world. And there's my cat. Oh my gosh, all my favorite people here. Say hi. Hello. I was telling people that I haven't gotten you to crochet yet, but I got you to read that pattern that one time. And that was pretty funny. I'm going to try and find that video and I might put it up there. Okay. Everyone's saying hi to you. Mm -hmm. You smell good. Did you just get out the shower? Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I love, love you. you. I'll be wrapping up here soon. Okay. Love you. Okay. Back to the giveaway. <laughs> so what I do with my bag is since it has this nice big gusset on the bottom, you can just sit it on the ground and I just kind of fold the, yeah, I just kind of fold the, the arm, the handle over and it gives me a nice wide opening for my actual bag. So all that is to say, it's a fantastic bag. I love the design of it. And I just love that it was the gift. It was really amazing. So fast forward a few years and I went to um, some one of the side events that was at Rhinebeck last year. And I ran into the gals from Beautiful Sister and I had this bag with me. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's you. And they're like, yes, it's us. And they had this entire booth full of amazing bags. So they gave me a couple of them to give away. So the first one is this kind of more traditional bag. It does have a zip at the top. Uh, it's got this really cute pocket inside and it has a gusset as well. It's kind of on the smaller side, but I think this is perfect for like a small shawl. You can do socks in here um, or even the beginning of like a sweater or a smaller project. So there's this one with this beautiful like soft floral pattern on it. It's got a, a lot of nice browns, pinks, reds, nice neutral, real chill, right? Other side of the spectrum, we have a bag like the one that I have. And they had so many gorgeous fabrics, like it was really hard to choose. So I have this one. And the patterns on here are a little bit more like Halloween themed, but like with this really cute like retro color palette. I don't know. I was a fan. So I picked this one. So I hope you like it. And the way that this is going to work is I'm going to award two people with these bags. So I'm going to send them to you directly as well as maybe a couple other nice little goodies, a nice little crochet care package from T.O. Yarn Crafts. So this is how this is gonna work because I looked it up before I got here and there's no like super easy. Oh, somebody said they adore the merch collab with Shea Barton and oh my gosh, me too. That makes two of us, sweetie. Very fun. So the way this is going to work, because I looked it up and there's not a super easy way to do a giveaway on a YouTube live. But uh, what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to ask you to flood the comments and I'm going to count to 10 twice and I'm going to pick winners. The only issue is that these bags have to go to somebody within the continental United States because shipping rates are insane. So I'm really sorry to my international friends. Hopefully I can find a way to do this better to include you. But for everybody who is in the continental United States, when I say go, I'm going to have you flood the comments with whatever you want, whether it's an emoji of your name, whatever you want. Not yet. Don't flood them yet. Like, relax. Take a break. <laughs> take a breather. Not yet. Don't, <laughs> don't waste your comments. Okay. So I'm going to count to five flood the comments, and then I'm going to stop and pick a name. It's going to be whatever name is right at the bottom when I stop it, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Flood it. Flood it, all right? Now I'm about to count back from 10. So keep flooding it because you don't know where I'm going to stop. 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Congratulations, Kaya. K-A-Y-A. I see your photo. I'm taking a screenshot of my screen right now. And I will get in touch with you. So this is Kaya. Let me see. Is there a way I can pin message? Right? I pinned your message right at the top. Kaya, congratulations. You won one of the bags. Thank you so much. And what I'm going to ask you to do, well, I'll find you. Well, no. There, there really needs to be a process for this. Ms. Kaya, email me, toyarncrafts at gmail.com, and I'm going to trust that the other 874 of you are not going to do this, okay? Because the only way that this works, if we're all honest. So, Ms. Kaya, I would like you to email me, toyarncrafts at gmail.com, remind me who you are and that you want to give away tonight, okay? So, I took a picture of you and we'll sort it out, okay? Congratulations. So now let's get to our second winner. <laughs> I'm gonna count down from five. So you start flooding and then I'll count down from 10 and I'll pick our second winner, okay? Here we go. So I'm gonna write down Kaya's name because eventually I'm gonna have to unpin her comment. No cheating anybody. All right, here we go. Counting down from five, four, three, two, one. Flood them, get the floods going. Comment your emojis and your all your good stuffs. Now I'm going to count down from 10. Well, let me take a sip of coffee, sir. Count down from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Congratulations, Kayleen Balbo. Kayleen Balbo. There you are. So I just pinned your comment, Kayleen. You threw up a pink hand, a pink little wave. Congratulations, Kayleen. And thank you to so much to everybody who's here on my first live ever. Like, this was a really big deal for me. And you guys made this probably the most fun hour that I've had in a very long time. And I'm really grateful that y'all all hung out with me for over an hour. Like, this is wild. Congratulations to our two winners. Look out for more live streams and more giveaways, more fun, more great content. I mean, there's so much coming out of TL Yarn Crafts. I barely have a handle on all of it, okay? But I want to thank you so much for joining me, kind of like getting this first one out of the way. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but y'all sure do know how to make a girl feel special. I'll say that. So look forward to a new video on Sunday. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with blankets and stitches. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to see you. The, the, the schedule is three weeks on, one, weeks off, one week off. That's the schedule I'm trying to get to. But I appreciate you rocking with me to just randomly not have a video. Like That's not how I'd like it to go, but I'm pulled in a lot of directions right now. And um, sometimes producing a video has to take a backseat to some of the other things I have to do. And I appreciate you guys understanding. So I'm going to write your name down, Kayleen. E-E-N Balbo. And again, email me, toyarncrafts at gmail.com. Remind me who you are and that you want to give away. And I will talk to you about how to claim your prize. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me tonight. I have to jump off and go eat some dinner. Um, how's my temperature blanket going? Great. This is it right here. Remember, I'm working it for 2010, the year I got married. So, so far, this is March, April, and the first little bit of May. Thanks for asking. I love y'all and I'll see you later. Bye.